Hello, everybody. So in the next 15 minutes, I'm going to give you sort of my opinion on um, an academic job search. And um, I'm focusing on a assistant professor application. The timing is actually very good because I, this last week I read over 150 applications for an assistant, for two assistant professor jobs in two different institutes. And um, what I'm gonna tell you is my opinion. I'm sure you could get to many other opinions, um, but um, I think that what I will tell you can apply not only to an academic job search uh, for an assistant professor, but for a postdoc or, or things like that as well. So um, the first step is about you. It's not about the job search. It's to define your skill set and get your work published. Because if you're going for an academic job, the holy grail is publications. So you really need to get this done. It's very important. Uh, and I think we all know that. I think, but you need to define your skill set. What are you bringing along with you that is special? that you have that you can bring to where, where you're going. You want to define your future project, and there we just heard about how two people defined, it, defined what they wanted to work on. I think for me, also, the, the, the major point is to pick something that you love to do. And uh, because if you're interested, you're going to work hard and you're going you're gonna to do it well. And you have to establish your career goals. And so this is a get all what this workshop is about, establishing your career goals. If you want to be in academia, you want to go for an assistant professor job, that of course implies that you want to become associate professor, full professor, etc. You want to define your priorities. So uh, we all have some restrictions on our life sometimes. You, you have a place you want to be, where you want to live, where, uh, where you can work. Uh, if you're a nuclear physicist, you might need the CERN. Um, there are many different things, kind of expertise. You have to get this all decided before you start looking around, I think, even for, for jobs. And then seek mentors, as we, as we discussed. Contact the professors in your field. You know, if, even if you're looking for a postdoc, you're looking for an academic job, why wait until this is advertised in nature, jobs, or science. There's no reason to wait. You should go ahead and contact places you want to go. Discuss with them. Uh, they might even be able to create a position, or in, in Switzerland, for example, we have Excellencia Fellowships. They might be able to say, yeah, well, let, why don't you apply for an Excellencia Fellowship in our, our department? So don't be shy contact professors in your field, the ones, people who you would like to have a lab near, and, and discuss with them. And discuss with professors, mentors in your environment, get their advice, because they've been through this all, sometimes like me, a very, very long time ago, but uh, they've been through it, and they, they're hiring people all the time, and, and they know uh, what to do. So um, the initial application, now we're saying this is for an assistant professor position, but it's very little different than a postdoc, it, uh, looking for a postdoc position or even a, a graduate student position. So first of all, put yourself in the mind of the evaluator. So for example, a, a really good scientist in, the, in a field is going to receive I don't know, maybe at least two, three postdoc applications per week if he's really leader in the field, and he's going to throw most of them away, okay, without hardly looking at them. And when we go through a job search, we have like 150, 100 applications, 50 to 100 applica 150 applications for one job, and we have to read them all, okay? So put yourself in the mind of the evaluators, not just that they have a lot of work to do, but make the points that you want to get past, the essential points, easy to understand and defend. So this person, this, what your application is gonna come in front of a committee, and somebody's gotta get up there and say, well, we should hire this person, or we should interview this person because, and you should give them that because in your application you should let them know why you should be hired for this position. 
And then include the most important items, of course, and I'll discuss each of these in, in a little bit of detail. A cover letter. Uh, I put a large uh, uh, importance on this cover letter. I think it's very important. You get an idea of the person's personality through the cover letter, which you don't get through the other things. And you get an idea also whether they think clearly, etc. And uh, from the cover letter, I, I already have a, a strong opinion, my, person, my personal opinion of the candidates. Then a CV. Um, don't overload these things. Make your CV simple. We'll come to that. Publication list, research proposal, and a teaching statement. These are the essential items for applying for an associate, uh, for an assistant professor. Now, some people want to put in things like seminars given, all the posters they presented, and things like that. I mean, usually this is useless. They won't have time to read any of that. So put it at the end if you insist on putting it in there. But if you put it in the middle, you may aggravate somebody who has to scroll through all that stuff very, very quickly. And uh, as having just done 150 of them, that's what I did. Okay, so the cover letter. Introduce yourself shortly, presenting your skill set. What do I have to offer? Tell them what you have to offer. Your past research, describe where you're, you're, you come from, where, what labs you've been in. You know, a lot of times just tell your mentor who you, who, who you got instructions from, who you learned from. Explain why you're interested in this particular position. It's, it's really not a good idea to apply for a position and not tell them why this position interests you. Just say, I'm looking for an assistant professor position and this is one. That doesn't work. You have to tell them why you want this position that you're applying for, this particular position, and your career plans. They want to know for an academic job, for an assistant professor, that you're ambitious, that you want to develop a research career, etc. Explain why you would be a good fit for the department. Now, this is a mistake that a lot of candidates do. They don't familiarize themselves with the department. You should go through and read who's in that department. If you have the time, and I suggest you take that time, you should read one or two of their key papers. Find out how they think. You'll know this will help you a lot because you'll also know what kind of questions they're going to ask you when you give a seminar. So these people are looking to hire someone who they can interact with. And if you don't know who they are and what they've done, you're not going to be able to interact with them. So can you identify possibilities for collaborations? This is not an essential point. Um, it, sometimes it can actually be dangerous. I've seen applications where people say, I want to collaborate with this person and that person, and these are exactly the two people who are leaving the department and have to be replaced. So you might want to put something, but you should have a little, know a little bit more b before you get too precise about that. But you could, you could mention that you might there could be a, a number of possible collaborations. And I would suggest also that you mention shortly how you would fund your research. So I would apply for an ERC grant or through the Swiss National Science Foundation, just so everyone knows that you are, are ready to do the work that is required to get funded. So the CV and publication list, keep it short and to the point. Basic data, your current position, uh, if you have maternity leave, paternity leave, put that in. That makes a difference. You know, people are really responsive to this now. If you've had a leave, you're not expected to have accomplished as much in the same amount of time because you had to take time off. Education and training, what kind of jobs you've had, if you've gotten awards or distinctions, prizes, best thesis, et cetera, be sure to put that in. If you've applied for grants, fellowships, and, and you've been successful, put that in. Don't, again, list all the seminars you gave and posters, et cetera. It's really going to make your CV very long and difficult to understand. In the publications, you put your publication lists. Um, highlight your name. It makes it a lot easier for everyone to go through. If a publication is particularly important, don't hesitate to write a couple sentences why this publication is important. Or if you were a co-first author or a co-senior author, don't hesitate to write a sentence about what this means, you know, 
I conceived this work, or I was very important in this work, and that's why I'm a co-first author. Um, for the research proposal then, define your long-range interests. So people are looking for someone who are gonna develop a long-range idea, a big program, not somebody who's tackling just a, a very small issue. They're looking for somebody who wants to solve a big problem. Now, big problems are not solved tomorrow, okay? So you have the big problem, you put your work into the big perspective, and then you say why this is important, and then you have to go on and explain how you're gonna really attack this. What are you gonna do first? What are you gonna do in the next few years? If this is very, very close to what you're doing now, personally, I don't think that's a great idea. You want to do something a little bit novel, creative. You want to see, show you're creative. But sometimes, when you're coming from a lab, a postdoc lab, you have something that's just so important, you have to continue and complete it and, and continue on that. But this can be explained. So, there's a unique opportunity, et cetera. I would say, in general, committees prefer somebody who's being creative, who's doing something new, who has a new and solid idea that their past mentor, who will often be very hard to compete with, isn't doing themselves. So um, describe, as I said, your research in the next couple years, few years, and why you can do this. Uh, it's always very easy when you have to read through a lot of these proposals to have illustrations, a figure explaining the basic steps in this, and summarize your approach. Now, if you're going to do something which is extremely risky, I would always recommend to have a plan B. It doesn't have to be detailed, but it shows you know this is a big risk and that you have an alternative uh, to look at. So, uh, the teaching statement. So the importance of the teaching statement actually depends on the job. So I think if you're going to be a Max Planck director in Germany or something, you don't have to worry about this. They don't have to teach. If you're coming to a university uh, where there's a lot of teaching, this could be very important. If you're going to the major research universities, they will consider this, but it will be secondary. Okay, they will consider it, but it will be secondary. So. Briefly explain your, explain your teaching experience. And I would say, if you don't have any and you're coming off a postdoc and you're applying for assistant professorship and you have no teaching experience, it's no big deal. Most of them don't. They have very little teaching experience. They've given a few practical courses or whatever. So don't worry about that. And so what type of courses could you teach? You can always say, I can teach basic biochemistry, basic organic chemistry, basic physics, etc. If you enjoy, enjoy teaching and presenting, say it. And if you have a teaching philosophy, so interaction with students, etc., also say this. How you might, I mean, some people might have some very creative ideas about uh, doing this, about teaching. Personally, I don't, but you might have uh, ideas about that. So, uh, two more slides, it's okay? Uh, one, okay, fine. So the interview, the interview, once, so once you get to this stage at the interview, you've made it through the hardest part in a way, but there's still one job for maybe six people. And there's a lot of personal chemistry going on here. This is actually very, the, the most difficult thing to uh, describe exactly what to do. But first of all, you should prepare your seminar carefully. Keep it understandable by everybody without avoiding the going into details. But make sure everybody has the background to understand why this is important and, and why, why you're doing this. And they, they will use this to judge your teaching abilities, essentially. Um, do not go over time. This is like the worst thing you can do when you give a, a job seminar is to go be 10 minutes over time. Um, answer questions clearly, succinctly. Don't go on and on and on. Be confident, but not arrogant. The worst you can be is arrogant. If you're confident, it's fine, but arrogant is really bad. 
So do your homework, be familiar with the PIs on these committees. Be aware of the PIs in the department. As I said before, you should have read some of their papers. You're gonna be asked to discuss with them. And the worst thing that you can do is to come and discuss with this person and not show any interest. You're very likely to get somebody on against you uh, in the decision. Show interest. Hopefully you have the interest to show it and show that interest when you discuss with the PIs. It's a very important part of the interview. So be prepared to answer questions about your long-term research plans. They're probably gonna ask you when all this is finished in five years, where do you wanna be? You know, how do you wanna be seen when you've done this? And you wanna say, well, I wanna be the, the leader in the chemical biology field, or I wanna be telling what you want, how you wanna be perceived at the end of this time. Be prepared to list what you need to do your research. They're gonna ask you this. Be familiar, if possible, with platforms, things at the institute that you can use, and be prepared for questions about teaching. And I, as I said, this depends on the institute. So finally, in the end, the last slide is, in the end, how do they decide? How do they really make this decision? So scientific excellence and independence is always, I think, the major criteria, or it should be. It's usually the major criteria. Creativity, originality, and importance of the field is also very important. We're looking for creative people who do something new. And it will be very important how the people in the department perceive this field. Are they interested in it? You could be completely fantastic, the best thing that ever happened in a field, and if they're not interested in that field, they're not gonna hire you. So at this point, this becomes very important. So if you feel your field is a little bit to the side from them, try to make them feel why this could be interesting for them. And fit to the department structures is important. So does your subject fit in? Does your age fit in? But this, you don't have to worry too much about that. Uh, personal chemistry will be very important. And I say this is why this interview stage is very important. Get on their good side, talk with them, interest them, uh, and listen to them. And new technologies brought in is very important. If you can bring in new technologies, that's an added plus in this job search and potential collaborations institutes. And this is particularly important when you're joining into a structure as for example, an NCCR. So thank you and I'd be happy to answer any questions.